there is an image that I, is, many images of you performing are branded in my memory, but one in particular, and you were playing William Lyon Mackenzie on the steps of Queen's Park. And it was a rally against a certain government and a certain government action. And there were three things that came together at that moment as I listened to you. There was history, mm -hmm. there was William Lyon Mackenzie, there was politics, and that was your acting in the middle of it. And they all sort of rolled together like that in a very powerful place. So I want to talk about the history part of it, but also the performance part of it, but also the activism part of it. Because they all rolled together, and in the center of it was Canadian history. Why are you so interested in Canadian history? I'm not. <laughs> I thought you were going to criticize me because I did William Lyon Mackenzie without a Scottish accent. <laughs> but your accent was terrible. Uh, no. Uh, well, that's a good question because I am, you know, again, that was from uh, 1837, the Farmers' Revolt, which is Theatre Pass Mariah, where we're talking at this very moment. It was a, a, just a warehouse at that time. Well, it wasn't just a gleam in Paul Thompson's eye at that time. But anyways, um, and my encounter with uh, Paul Thompson and Theatre Pass Mariah, which the first thing I ever saw was Under the Grey Whack, blew me, I mean, it was just, it blew me, sorry, it sounds rude. <laughs> We're setting the parameters for this, <laughs> right, right now. Okay. Anyways, what that, year was that, Under the Grey Whack? I, I'm, don't ask me now. Late 60s? I, early I, 70s? I don't have, no, no, it'd be yeah, late 70s, not early 60s. It'd okay. be, It'll be, it'd be after the farm show, whatever that was. Then okay. Under the Grey Whack, I think, was their second, that was the second kind of group thing they did. I saw it here, and I, at the same time, then auditioned with them for Them Donnelly's. But Under the Grey Whack, and it was the introduction to Paul Thompson, and suddenly the idea, I had gone to England, I had come back from England, I'd been in Vancouver, I'd come to Toronto, and I encountered this man and this group of people, and suddenly it was the beginning of my artistic life, it seemed to me, with the idea that you could make theater here about your own experience. You didn't have to go to England because that was my idea, I would go to England to be a stage actor. I didn't go to the stage to be a film actor, I went to England to be a, uh, you know, a stage actor. And that then for me was just a huge burst of creative energy that just sustained me. Totally. I, I and was, it made, the, was it the idea of it, or was it way, the way that Paul Thompson It was both, because it, it was, again, it, and, and his idea that this was a theater that had, um, that you had a job in your community, in your society, which was to produce theater. Like the baker produced bread, or the farmer produced food, you produced uh, theater pieces for your community. They enjoyed them, and we, you were all part of it. You weren't separate from it. You weren't rich and famous. You weren't stars. You had a kind of function of, of art. That well, why would that seed plant in you, Eric? I mean, there's lots of actors who also went to England, New York, and Paris, and they didn't come back. Or they came back and went, oh, yeah, interesting, and they went back to England. But this thing planted in you, and as you say, it's grown through your career. Why did it? Why in you? Well, I don't know why in me, other than I, all, all I can explain is that for me, it was a, a creatively unleashed me. That I could then use my imitations of my aunts and my uncles. I didn't have to worry about the British accent or the American accent. I had all kinds of experience that now was useful to me in my trying to live in this <coughs> improvisational theater and writing these plays. My ideas made sense to a certain extent. They had now, they had, uh, they had value. Whereas in uh, doing another play, some place, nobody went, oh, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. What do you say? You don't sound English to me. You, you know, so that, suddenly I felt, wow, I felt empowered by this. And I was, I was totally excited about making up these stories and finding out these things. So 1837 was, um, again, this was suddenly for me a, rebel, a, a revelation the way Salutin and this group came at it, because this was the story of a failed war of independence in Canada. It wasn't about the, 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 you know, the steady uh, development of democracy in the colonies. It, this, was a, this was a revolt that we'd lost, and therefore made all kinds of um, sense as to why we were that, the way we are now. 
that is a deeply colonized country in English Canada. I'll, I'll put it that way. There's, this is a struggle, an ongoing struggle here. But sim if we won, if Papineau and Mackenzie had won, well, America would be ours now. The world would be ours. But anyways, so that was, and so, but again, using Mackenzie in this, which, what you're talking about, City Hall was the amalgamation, I guess, of the city, because I used that, that Mackenzie speech. Canadians, you love freedom. I know you do. And I use that because it comes from the family compact times. That's where they were rebelling against. And lo and behold, we are back into oligarchies, uh, people, you know, family compact time, you know, where, where the, 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 and so Mackenzie becomes what he said back then is equally applicable now.